This evening, the Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN, explained that it has commenced grid restoration nationwide with power supply now available in the west, north, central, south, east, and a large portion of the northern parts of the country. This explanation follows total grid collapse that occurred at 12.35 a.m. of Thursday, causing outage nationwide after more than 421 days of consistent grid stability. TCN says the collapse, which occurred as a result of fire incident on the Kainji and Jeba 330 KVA Line 2, is being investigated with a view to forestalling future occurrence and strengthening the grid. The last system collapse recorded was on the 20th of July 2022. Solutions to the national grid collapse is the focus of the program this evening. I am your carrier, Clinton. <coughs> Welcome to the Nigeria Today. Now, joining us in the studio to discuss the collapse of a uh, national grid is uh, Prince Will Okori. Prince Will is a President Association for Public Policy Analysis. Thank you for joining us in Nigeria today. Thank you for having me. Also joining us via Zoom is Bode Fadipe. He's a CEO, Sage Consulting and Communications. He undertakes past sector policy analysis, advisory and advocacy for record players and consumers. Welcome to Nigeria today. Thank you for having me. Good evening, viewers. Yeah. Now, I'll start with you, uh, Bodhi. You know, uh, in 2022, according to a report, we have um, about uh, eight uh, uh, collapse, you know, great collapse. Uh, and uh, even just recently, just uh, in the introduction, we uh, reported that um, we have celebrated the TC and announced that um, 400 we've enjoyed stable greed as in uh, grid stability for over 421 consecutive days. Why do we still have this uh, uh, grid collapse? Well, th thank you so much for that question. Uh, the reasons why we have grid collapse are not far-fetched. Admittedly, we have celebrated 421 days, unbroken days of uh, grid stability. But that is not to say that we have arrived at the location where we desire to be in terms of grid stability in this country. As a matter of fact, in terms of the entire uh, value chain or the grid, the grid system itself, uh, everyone who is, uh, who is observant and who is a stakeholder in the Nigerian power sector will, uh, will admit the fact that the, the, the sector is not where it wants to be and where Nigeria wants it to be. So the sector is still lagging behind. I'm sure Mr. Okorie, who is also a discussant on the, on the program this evening, will also agree that the sector has not come to that place because I know it's a, it's a very strong voice in co customer or consumer advocacy. Uh, we all agree that the sector has not come to the place where we want it to be. And there are several reasons that are responsible for that. Uh, the equipment themselves, the issue of uh, amount of money that is available to the sector, the current state of the economy, and several other factors that are plaguing the power sector today. Uh, the one that has just happened that has led to this collapse in the wee hour of the day is as a result of fire outbreak. And that could be, that could be ascribed to so many factors. As a matter of fact, there are schools of thought that are asking whether... Uh, this is a sabotage and somebody is not happy that uh, the, 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 the market or the, the sector or Nigeria electricity supply industry is celebrating 421 days of grid stability. I mean, it's, on, it's, it's, it's unprecedented in the last 10 years of the power sector that we will have over one year of uh, grid stability. I mean, those of us who are familiar with the sector we know clearly that that was an unprecedented achievement, at least for TCM. So if suddenly we are now having uh, a, 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 a glitch, then so many questions will be asked. Is it as a result of sabotage? Is it that, the, is it that those who sat down to make the sacrifice, they are no longer there to make the sacrifice that made the grid to stay for one year? 
is it that the equipment that we are using is dealing with suddenly after over one year of constant usage what could be the what could be responsible for the fire outbreak why is it that the system did not sense the fire in such a way that it will, it will, it will on its own cut off the, the the offending part of the network so that the entire grid does not go down as it went down and it's not just partial collapse it's a total collapse and that's quite strange that it will happen uh, so soon after celebrating 421 days of great stability. That's what I want to say for now. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Prince Will, now you've heard what Bode said there. Yeah, beyond the issues that he has raised, what are some of the challenges that you think that should be nipped in the bud if we are to you know, enjoy consistent great stability? You see, on the 21st of June this year, the Licensed Electrical Contractors Association of Nigeria held a seminar in Abuja here at the Labor House. And the issue was stability, security and stability of networks. NEMSA, Nigerian Electricity Management Services Agency, is the agency of the federal <laughs> government that has the responsibility of certifying personnel that carry out installation electricity installation now when you talk about this grid collapse like he alluded to the fact that it could be equipment it could be sabotage i'll look at two angles one equipment when you want to talk about equipment you talk about who produced those equipment how are they brought are they quality equipments who manufactured them are they foreign if they are foreign and they are fake how did they find their way into Nigerian markets to be used? You have Nigerian customs, you have standards organization of Nigeria. So if you're asking for solution in that regard, the question will be, is there effective monitoring of this equipment that come? Are they of standard and quality? The second one in that regard is, who are the personnel used to carry out the installation? Now, you see a situation where in Nigeria today, if you want to practice law, you be a member of Nigerian Bar Association. You want to practice medicine. You be a, Nigerian, a member of Nigerian Medical Association. But in the electricity sector, irrespective of the hazardous nature of the sector, in terms of life and property, once fire happens, a lot of things are destroyed. You can't recover them. Why is it that the Licensed Electrical Contractors Association of Nigeria are not empowered to really stand strong to monitor and censor those who carry out installations so that you don't see that quality staff, quality engineers, and uh, not quacks, people that are accredited and certified by NEMSA are carrying out these jobs. It has been a battle between the licensed electrical contractors and NEMSA to encourage all the people they've licensed to be in their organization. If they were in their organization, this discussion now could be taken to them to identify who are the contractors that did these jobs? And why was it like this? Mm -hmm. But you can't say that now. Because when they license them, they will say anybody should go and operate. That uh, is, uh, you have freedom of association. That they are non-governmental. But we forget that Section 14.2c of the 1999 Constitution as amended provides that the participation of the people in their government shall be ensured. We forget that Section 24e says it is the duty of the citizen to assist law enforcement agencies in maintenance of law and order. In other words, these licensed electrical contractors, even though they are not in government, they can be encouraged to monitor those who carry out these installations. Now, when Mr. Fadikwe alluded to the issue of sabotage, I tell you there is a nexus between sabotage and investment in the sector. The, most of the things of crime that is committed in most cases, if you go and investigate, out of anger and of, out of feeling of injustice, some people do things that are not supposed to be done. What do I mean by that? In the power sector today, most consumers are the people that bought transformers, pool, wire. And they buy this. The distribution company looks away. And these people will buy these things and they energize it with their money. The distribution company takes over and starts billing them arbitrarily. In most cases, some communities have spent almost 50 million to electrify their... There is network expansion investment policy 
in the power sector. It's not implemented, it's not enforced. It's not, there is no enlightenment at all. So communities and individuals who invest are told, well, you can invest. But the condition before is that if you are investing, you will agree with them and they will, they will compensate you after. But it's not done in most cases. The process does not favor those people. So you can see a situation where some youths in some communities could out of anger, feeling that even if though they have invested and bought these things, they are kept in darkness for months. And the amount of money they are told to pay is beyond what they should ordinarily pay. Out of anger, some people could commit this. But if you want solution, the solution is there has to be a responsible way of managing the sector. Yeah, before we go to solution, uh, uh, Prince Will, I'll allow uh, Bode to uh, weigh in on this issue. Now, uh, Bode, uh, one of the uh, challenges mentioned by uh, the uh, uh, players in this uh, industry, talking about the TCN and um, uh, the TCN, he said there is the, the zero spinning reserve and um, also lack of adequate system control. What impact uh, does this have on the grid? Now, in, in terms of system control, which is the SCADA, and then spinning reserve, what, what spinning reserve is supposed to do is that when a, 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 when a station is going down or when a unit is going down, there is another one that is running constantly so that when that one goes down and or is seen to be going down that one can be asked to take off immediately so there is a governor that is looking at the entire network that is looking at the entire transmission network vis-a-vis -vis the generation the generation uh, performance and is making sure that in the event that some one of the one of one of these uh, units is going down another one is ready immediately because you see, the thing with electricity is that it does not tolerate any space at all. If you want to have a seamless, if you want to have a seamless power sector, you, you must have a situation where there is somebody waiting on the wings. It's just like I, I, I will compare it to four by one hundred relay race. You know, the moment, the moment the first person takes off, the other three legs are already warming up, stretching their hands behind trying to take the baiting as soon as the, the person coming gets to their point. Once he gets to their point, that person takes up immediately and is going until they get to it. So ex almost exactly the same situation. Somebody is waiting on in the wings. That's what the spinning reserve is meant for. Somebody is waiting so that in the event that a brother unit is going down, a sister station is going down, that station picks up the load immediately so that there is no drop in frequency. In Nigeria, the frequency level is 50 hertz. Anything slightly below that, it can throw the entire grid into the kind of situation that we had overnight. That is as far as uh, spinning reserve is concerned. Then the SCADA is a monitoring device that looks at, that has a helicopter view of the entire grid to know when problem is coming up and to identify the location of the problem and to draw attention to it immediately so that those who are supposed to take action are taking action both human action um, and and uh, 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 action for from the equipment for instance take the fire outbreak on the kindly jebba 330 kv line that is the highest voltage in this country and for transmission, usually their equipment are very sensitive, especially their tripping unit. So that once it senses a problem, that tripping unit will cut off the, 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 the faulty area so that it does not engulf the entire grid system and give us the kind of situation or the kind of results that we had around 12, 12 midnight today. Once the tripping uh, unit does not sense it once the relay that is set to sense that fault does not sense it and the tripping unit does not trigger then it means the fault will now become such that some other equipment will go down and once those equipment goes down the the, the, the network will. so what i'm trying to say in effect is that having described their function you can see the utility you can see the importance you can see why those two areas of the grid or of the entire electricity network must function optimally. 
you must not you must make sure that per second per second all of them are working unfortunately we don't have a spinning reserve and that's what transmission has admitted and that's quite unfortunate and very sad that at this point in time we don't have a spinning reserve at the generation level and then our SCADA system by now we still have not been able to perfect that SCADA system unless we do some of these things alongside some other solutions that will be preferred i'm afraid the 421 days that we celebrated i hope will not be wiped away very soon thank you very much buddy i uh, will take a break now and the conversation will continue after the break it is, this is still nigeria today to stay with us implementation of the ruling is also dependent on another aspect or another harm of government nowhere in the world will allow on that digital economy for banks not to be dispensing domestic currency in that economy. What will make this one different? We want to know what they do as occupation. All of these uh, attributes that are questions have been designed to investigate. In a few days to come, we'll see that we are all alone. They're all crannies and uh, uh, everywhere in Nigeria uh, telling people to cooperate. Welcome to Nigeria today. Welcome back. This is still Nigeria today. We are talking about the collapse of the national grid solutions, actually. Now, um, uh, my guests are still here with me, two gentlemen. Now, uh, Prince, we had all uh, body reader having reeled out all the problems, all the challenges. We're looking at solutions. Can there be a time when we will celebrate five years, ten years, twenty-five years of uninterrupted power supply? I wonder. I am not optimistic. Going by the things on ground, for instance, he talked about fire outbreak. You have federal fire service. What is the preventive measure they have on ground? What is the relationship between the Federal Fire Service and the generation companies and distribution, or even TCM, to be able to profess or prevent fire outbreak? We don't know. What is the policy of, how is the policy on stability and security of the grid there was a solution. being implemented? This solution, number one, for instance, mm -hmm. I mentioned to you that the licensed electrical contractors had a program in June. What has been done with the report of that program? The report that came out. For instance, why will somebody connect to the grid at the weekend? Connection to the grid, transformers to the grid at the weekend, without doing it on a weekday, where it will be supervised, is not proper. So there has to be proper supervision, number one. Number two, there has to be serious effort in ensuring that quality, most of the manufacturers of uh, electrical cables and all that now are crying that they can't make profit anymore because fake materials are all over. And when they complain, if the people are arrested, before you know it, they are released and they go their way. So fake materials are all over the place. So where you do not enforce the laws that will prevent entrance of fake materials all over the place, and you don't enforce the laws that will make it necessary that only qualified personnel carries out electrical installation. You cannot have a good one. Then again, the investment in the sector, the distribution companies, what is their investment? Who monitors what is happening? i give you an example. There was a time we went to Niger Delta Power Holding Company. We told them, based on what we found out, that consumer interest has to be looked at in order to prevent vandalism of transmission lines. We were already cold. When we followed up, one guy there told us, he said, ah, what is their business? You have to leave the vandalize it. Is it not them that will be in darkness? What do they have to lose? You can see such. When such a thing is said, that means they, don't, they care less. Meanwhile, monies will be expended to repair the transmission lines that are destroyed. Why not prevent it? Why not ensure that the uh, network expansion investment policy is consumer friendly? So that consumers that invest get a re refund for their investment so that there will be seemingly a happy and friendly environment for the, uh, in the process. So if there is no monitoring mechanism to make the institutions of state, the agencies under the power sector, mm -hmm. perform, we can't have it. Because as it stands today, the average Nigerian consumer is a victim. I, I, yesterday or two days ago, 
they had a program, Vigilante Group had a program, they called me to present keynote address. Mm -hmm. My research, what I found out, was going by the Police uh, Public Order and Public Safety Act, which says that the President can give instruction to the Commission, to the Inspector General of Police, and he will carry it out without question. The same to the Commission of Police, through the, uh, the Governor will give him, and he will do. That shows you that safety and security of the nation and every other in the nation depends on the democratic institutions of state. Where the governor of a state wants safety in the electricity sector, he will ensure that safety and security of the networks are taken care of. Where the president wants that, president has to look at that. But what happens in Nigeria? Emphasis is on money, money, money. Consumer, consumer, bring, consumer, do. But we have a new administration and things are changing. The new administration needs to overhaul the power sector. My, so, my suggestion is the power sector and those that are controlling it, they may not like what I will say, but there is need to overhaul it. Because most of the people in the sector have been there since NEPA days and power holding company days. And if they were there and in charge, and power holding company didn't perform well, NEPA didn't perform well. What new thing will they bring? And that is what you are seeing. Because new blood has not been injected. What you see is still the same old people that know how they do it and deceive the political leaders. Okay. Because what they tell the political leaders, so, you know, many a times. Prince, I have to stop you here so okay. that body can also uh, <laughs> add his own voice to the solutions. So, Bode, a, a lot of uh, uh, problems, a lot of challenges. What, in your opinion, what are the solutions? Well, th th thank you so much. Uh, Unfortunately, we don't have enough time, but I will try to be as brief as possible. Number one, I think the first thing is that we need to review the entire power sector. Uh, but in another, in a one month, one month uh, and some few days, the power sector will be 10 years. I am aware that there is a conference that is coming up uh, between October 31st and 1st of November. I'm sure NCA will be there. That conference is intended to review the entire power sector. So that, 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 that's number one. We need to see where we are and where we are going to, and what has hindered, hindered us from getting to where we are supposed to be, when we are supposed to be there. I mean, why we are not where we are supposed to be. And part of it is that all the, all the members of the value chain are going to sit down together for the first time and stop the blame game and look at themselves in the face and say, these are where the problems are. Number two, so, number two solution, which I know very clearly, is that why lines are too long they create problem we need to break our lines we need to and that's one thing that the the the, the new electricity act has done let's let's give kudos to uh, president bola ahmed Tinubu that signed into law i think on the 8th of june or thereabouts the current electricity act that we are using that act now allows the state to be players in the generation, transmission, and distribution sector of the value chain. And that's a major milestone because you can now reduce the pressure on the grid itself. I see my brother Prince Lee shaking his head. Perhaps he does not believe in what the act says. Anyway, when we get to the bridge, we'll cross it. The other one is that, of course, transmission must continue to spend a lot of time and money on its own uh, network. Let us give kudos to them. Thank you very much, buddy. Thank you very much, buddy. I really wish we had more time. But um, this, that, this is it on uh, Nigeria Today. A very big thank you to Bode Fadipe, CEO Sage Consulting and Communications. He undertakes part sector policy analysis. Um, thank you for your time and your contribution. Thank you so much for having me. And also, uh, we appreciate Prince Will Okori, President Association for Public Policy Analysis. Thank you for joining us for your time and contribution. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for being a part of it. Don't forget, Nigeria Today is weekday at 7.30 p.m. on NTN News 24. You can watch this and other episodes on www.youtube.com slash NTN News 24. Once again, thank you for watching. I am your carrier, Clinton. Goodbye. <laughs>